lost his head. Is John with the address emergency? Hi, there is an emergency. I found, found something in my son's closet wrapped in a plastic bag. Okay, what was it? I think it's a human head. It's a what? I think it's a human head. Police in Grand Junction, Colorado, got this horrifying 911 call on March 1, 2021. The caller's kid is currently outside the house while she calls for assistance. The mother had recently uncovered an even more unsettling secret buried in his closet. The dispatcher is trying to gather as much information as possible to make sense of this shocking call and give officers an idea of what they might be walking into. So why do you think it's that? Because it looks like a saw in ear? Is it all bloody or does it like anything like that? Have you done anything? Grand Junction, Colorado. A quaint town known for its picturesque landscapes, not a place where you'd expect a brutal crime to unfold. Nestled in the western slope of the Rocky Mountains, it's a place where the rhythm of life flows as gently as the Colorado River that winds its way through the town. Its residents, friendly and warm, go about their day with a sense of security and peace, their lives intertwined in the small town charm that Grand Junction exudes. It's a town where the unexpected is just that, unexpected. A town where children play freely, neighbors know each other by name, and crime is something you only read about in big city newspapers or watch on late night television. But on February 27, 2021, this tranquility was shattered with a heinous act. On that fateful day, a horrifying discovery was made. A typical day in the Kohi household took a dark turn, as Brian Kohi, the second's parents, stumbled upon a chilling secret. Hidden away in their son's closet, they found parts of a body, a grim revelation that would forever change their lives. The body parts belonged to none other than Warren Barnes, a 69-year-old homeless man known to the local community. This was not something anyone could prepare for, let alone expect. The horror that washed over the Coey family as they made this grisly discovery was unimaginable. Brian, their 21-year-old son, had been living a double life. He was not just their son, but also a murderer who had taken a life in cold blood. The realization that their own flesh and blood was capable of such a heinous act was a bitter pill to swallow. The police were immediately alerted, transforming the Kohi home into a crime scene. The once ordinary household was now the center of a murder investigation. Officers moved meticulously through the house, collecting evidence that would later be used to piece together the horrifying puzzle of Warren Barnes's demise. As the case unfolded, it became evident that this was not a spur-of-the-moment act. The prosecution argued that Brian had meticulously planned the murder, even going as far as attempting to dispose of the body to cover his tracks. This showed a chilling awareness of his actions, a clear indication of his guilt. This discovery left the community of Grand Junction reeling. The shockwaves from this gruesome act touched every corner of the town, leaving residents to grapple with the reality that such a horrific crime had occurred in their midst. The tranquility of their community had been shattered, replaced with a sense of unease and fear. And with this gruesome discovery, a murder investigation was launched. The search for justice had begun. A journey that would reveal the true extent of Brian Cohey's monstrous act. The victim was 69-year-old Warren Barnes, a homeless man with a life story that was far from ordinary. The tale of Warren Barnes is one of resilience and community spirit. Despite his homelessness, Barnes was a pillar of the Grand Junction community, a man whose journey through life was marked by hardships that never managed to extinguish his spirit. His life was not defined by the tragedy that befell him, but rather, by the impact he had on those around him. His presence was felt in the tight-knit community of Grand Junction, Colorado, where he was known for his kindness and his ability to bring people together, even in the most challenging of circumstances. Warren was a man who, despite his personal struggles, left a significant mark on the community. The news of his brutal murder sent shockwaves through the town, a testament to the impact he had on those around him. His life was a beacon of resilience, 
a testament to the human spirit's ability to endure even the most daunting of challenges. In the wake of his death, the community came together to honor his memory, organizing a memorial that served as a poignant reminder of the man they had lost. It was a testament to the significant role he played in the community, the void his absence had left behind. Despite his circumstances, Warren was a cherished member of the community, leaving a void that could never be filled. His memory lives on not only in the hearts and minds of the people whose lives he touched, but also in the collective conscience of the Grand Junction community. A man of strength, resilience, and kindness, Warren Barnes will forever be remembered for the life he lived and the impact he had. The man behind this heinous crime was 21-year-old Brian Cohey II, a young man whose life was seemingly unremarkable until this fateful incident propelled him into the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. Brian Cohey II was not a name known to many. A young man navigating life, he battled with mental health disorders, a struggle that was brought to light during his trial. His mental health became the centerpiece of the defense, with a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity. The defense argued that Cohey's actions were not of his own volition, but a result of his psychological state. But there's a dark twist to this tale. Cohey had an ominous ambition, a sinister plan that he hoped would catapult him into the annals of criminal history. He yearned for notoriety, to be known far and wide, but not for a noble cause or an exceptional talent. Cohey aspired to be a famous serial killer. However, the prosecution painted a different picture during the trial. They argued that Cohey's actions were premeditated, that he was fully aware of his actions when he ended Warren Barnes's life. The evidence supported their claims. Cohey had not only committed the murder, but had also attempted to dispose of the body, an act that showed a clear awareness of his deeds. His parents discovered parts of Barnes's body in his closet, leading to his arrest. This discovery marked the end of Cohey's freedom and the beginning of his journey into the harsh reality of the criminal justice system. The court was not swayed by his plea of insanity. Despite his plea, Cohey was found guilty. His sinister plan to become a famous serial killer thwarted. The gravity of his actions was not lost on the court, and the verdict was a testament to that. The dark path that Cohey had chosen led him not to the fame he sought, but to a life behind bars a stark reminder of the consequences of such heinous acts. The trial was one of the most horrific experienced by Judge Richard Gurley in his 37 years in the court system. The courtroom was filled with an air of dread as the trial proceedings began. The defense and prosecution presented their arguments, with the mental health disorders of Brian Cohey taking center stage. Despite his plea of not guilty by reason of insanity, the evidence was irrefutable. The prosecution painstakingly laid out the sequence of events, from the planning of the murder to the gruesome attempt to dispose of the body. They argued that Cohey was fully aware of his actions, driving a chilling point home. This was no spontaneous act of insanity, but a calculated, premeditated crime. In the courtroom, the echoes of Warren Barnes's life resonated powerfully. Family and friends of the victim took the stand, sharing the lifelong impacts of Cohey's monstrous deeds. Their testimonies were heart-wrenching, speaking of profound loss and sadness. Yet, amidst the grief, was a poignant revelation. Cohey's horrific act, ironically, had brought Warren's fragmented family together, united in their mourning and pursuit of justice. As the trial concluded, the final verdict was delivered. A moment that held the courtroom in its grip, the judge's gavel fell, sealing Cohey's fate. He was found guilty of first-degree murder, tampering with a deceased human body, and tampering with evidence. Cohey was sentenced to life in prison, plus 13 and a half years without parole, a grim end to his delusional ambitions. In the wake of this tragedy, Warren Barnes's memory lives on. A man of humble existence, his life was nonetheless cherished and valued by those who knew him. Despite the cruel circumstances of his passing, his spirit continues to resonate in the hearts of his loved ones and the community of Grand Junction. A memorial now stands in downtown Grand Junction, a testament to the enduring impact of Warren's life. Here, 
Amid the hustle and bustle of everyday life, one finds a serene spot dedicated to Warren. It serves as a poignant reminder of a life taken too soon, a symbol of a community's collective grief and resolve to remember. Warren's untimely death has left a profound void in the community. His family and friends continue to grapple with the loss, their pain echoed in the countless others who were touched by his life. Yet, in the face of this loss, there has been a coming together, a strengthening of bonds. Warren's fragmented family found unity in their shared grief, a poignant testament to the lasting impact of his life. The tragedy of Warren Barnes has provoked deep sorrow, but also a reaffirmation of the value of every life. In the wake of the horror, the community has chosen to remember Warren not for the circumstances of his death, but for the essence of his life. Warren Barnes, a man whose life, though marred by hardship, touched many. His memory will forever echo in the hearts of those who knew him.